Hey, it's Eddie. Welcome to another edition of Building the Dome House. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the ventilation system. I have here a Brown ventilation system and this works a little bit different than probably what you're used to. The way this thing works, you've noticed it's got two lines coming in, two lines going out that way. Actually, one of these lines goes out, one of these lines comes in, and one of these two lines goes out, and one of these two lines comes in. And what it does is it pulls air out of the house, blows it out, and brings fresh air in. Now, the way the system's designed, uh, it's pulling air out of all of the bathrooms and it's dumping air into all of the living space. So the system works one of two ways. It's on a timer, so it will kick on every hour for 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you preset it to, to exchange the air in the house so that you always have a constant batch of fresh air. Um, it also operates off of a button that's placed in each bathroom. So if you use the bathroom, um, and either you use the shower or, or the toilet and you want to get rid of odors, you hit the button in there and it turns it on for a preset amount of time and blows the air out. In California, we're also required to have humidistats plugged in. So what that'll do is if somebody takes a shower but forgets to turn the ventilator on, when it senses moisture in the air, it automatically kicks the system on. Um, so you don't, each bathroom doesn't have its own individual bathroom fan. This unit is the fan for all of the bathrooms. And I'll take a walk through and kind of show you how we've got this run. Follow me. So as you can see, we got these lines in front of the garage. And there's two lines. There's one line and then a second line here. And it doubles in. Comes into here. And then this runs all the way in here. And back into that bathroom. In the living room, I've got four lines coming in. These two middle lines actually go up to dump air into the bat, the bat, blah, blah, blah. these two lines dump air into the bedrooms upstairs and this grate and this, this area will be covered with a grate to dump fresh air in here. Here we are in the downstairs bathroom. You can see the uh, spot where the grill will go for the downstairs bathroom. And here are the two lines that were in the living room below that come up. One dumps into that room, one dumps into this room. And if we turn around, Here's the line that dumps into the master. And we've got, uh, here's one of our exhaust lines here. That is gonna be pulling air out of the upstairs master bath. So if we work our way around here, here's the walk-in shower. You've got a vent there and you've got a vent into this toilet closet because this toilet has its own closet in here. I know it looks like a tight space, but it's really not. It's actually, Quite roomy, and that's how we ventilate that. <clears throat> now you also notice that we have a wall furnace here that vents out through the cupola. Um, this was a code thing. Code required us to have a heating system upstairs and downstairs, even though the likelihood is these are never gonna get used. Um, this house doesn't, these houses don't really get cold in the winter. They kind of maintain a constant temperature and. Uh, because we have wood-burning fireplaces in both the living room and the master bedroom, those can be kicked on and, uh, and should definitely take any slight chill off. And it'll stay warm for probably a week or two after that. But they're here. We had to put them in because it was code, so they're in. And here's the downstairs heating, heating unit. Um, it's just a 35,000 BTU wall furnace, uh, propane. It's actually a natural gas that's been converted to propane. And... Um, as you'll note, this, this uh, ducting kind of goes up and has to jig around uh, a bunch of stuff. And that's because um, basically the structural beams were kind of in the way. We couldn't cut through them, so we had to kind of make some modifications to, to route stuff. Um, this is something that, you know, engineers, I've run into this before in other structures and other houses. A lot of times engineers won't think about where mechanical stuff has to get run. This is why we have little soffits that are popping up here and there. 
Um, so it's something you might want to think about too. In the design. Make sure you don't have structural beams running over an area where you have to run a, a duct or something out, otherwise you may have to snake around it. Um, but yeah, this should work great. Um, all this has been signed off now. Fortunately, Fortunately my plant checker came by. He was happy with everything. Uh, so the plumbing. So the plumbing is done. The sprinklers are done. The electrical will be done soon. And the uh, ventilation is all done. So next step is probably going to be insulation uh, followed by drywall. So that's going to be exciting because we're going to get to a point where it's going to start actually looking like a house instead of a construction zone. Uh, right now, my guys, the banging you hear is my guy working on, uh, he's setting up for the stucco. I want to get the face of the house sealed before I spray foam insulation in there because obviously if it rains, which can happen, and that insulation ends up getting wet, which is no good. So uh, on all of these things, you definitely want to get a lot of bids. I had bids that were all over the place for, for each of these. Uh, for my ventilation, I had bids that ranged from a low of about four grand to a high of like 10 to 12. Uh, continuing on the uh, ducting, I also have two large ducts that run from almost the back of the house all the way to the front, and they poke out just above that chimney over there. Uh, one of those is for the range hood, and the other is for the dryer. And interestingly enough, because they were both over 15 feet long, in fact, I think they're about 35 feet long, the LA County Building and Safety requires that I had these engineered. So I had a mechanical engineer who drew up a plan, did some calculations, and it turns out I have a booster fan for the 8-inch duct that goes to my range top. And that booster fan is all the way over down there. And what it'll, the way it'll be wired, it'll be, it'll be wired directly from that fan to the switch that turns on the range hood. So that both the range hood and that kick on simultaneously and they suck all the air out. And then next to it, I've got a smaller uh, one over here. I'll show you this one. So this one here is for the dryer, and the way it works is that it senses pressure and it kicks on and will continue blowing the dryer uh, gases and uh, wet, moist air out of the house. So that's kind of how that works, pretty simple. The ducts run along here. Got a sprinkler head that popped up here. And they put another sprinkler head right here also. Here's the ducts that come down. The ducts route out. Boom, they go out of the house. And then they go all the way to the front where they punch out and dump out in front of the, uh, underneath the deck. So, that's ventilation. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.